Hey, what's up, guys? It's McHugh. Well, I thought I'd give you all a little bit of update on what's going on with the shows that we have. If you've been watching from the beginning, we started out with Instantly Dated, which was just me talking about cool stuff like video games, B-movies, whatever happened to Domino's Pizza, The Noid, and all that type of stuff. And we ended with a cliffhanger where I was essentially sending my robot up into a satellite that I had won on eBay and was trying to get it there to take over that satellite. So that cliffhanger episode is still in the works. In the meantime, what happened is we're doing Instantly Dated Live now, which we're using uh, Google Hangouts live on air, and I'm bringing in uh, one of my best friends from forever, Sean Brennan, and one of his best friends forever, Matt Jackson, and we're talking about the same cool stuff. And the last episode that we have, Sean and I brought on Weird Paul, who is a very talented musician, YouTuber. Uh, you should definitely check him out. Just look up Weird Paul. You'll find him anywhere. And um, Matt Jackson is going to be back in the next episode. I'm working on editing that right now. And uh, so what else do we have down the pipeline? Well, we've got the podcast which you may uh, be watching us uh, as a podcast. Maybe you're finding us on Retro War TV, or we're also on Rogue Cinema, which does a monthly type magazine, and uh, also a YouTube, of course. And then uh, we just started putting the stuff on Facebook. Um, and um, YouTube-wise, though, uh, one of the really cool guys who uh, watches the show all the time is Justin Bailey and uh, he had a couple of questions that he put on the YouTube comments so I thought I'd go ahead and answer his questions and he said how do you like YouTubing so far and like I said it I think it's a combination of uh, all these things not necessarily just YouTubing and especially with all the flags that uh, think content that can get flagged and things of that matter it's difficult to commit to just one medium I really like the podcasting because you pay for the hosting and you control the channel and um, Facebook I'm sure will run into issues not me personally but any creator they'll have to create a system just like YouTube did to uh, prevent people from uh, co copyright infringement and that type of stuff and you guys could certainly talk back in the comments or if you're watching the podcast just send me an email instantly dated at gmail.com and i'll make sure to get back to you and so uh how do i like it so far it's a lot of fun it's having fun with friends or just being creative myself uh, i used to be a tv news producer and so i'm getting to still do cool videos and stuff like that he said uh what do you think the future of the channel is? And I, I think it's just having a lot of fun and experimenting uh, with stuff and seeing what you guys like, you know? So um, definitely, once again, feedback is great. Uh, he said, has the RetroWare fist bump helped you at all? Well, RetroWare is a collaboration site. Uh, and what I do is um, have the RetroWare bump on the front and back of the show and let people know about RetroWare uh, if they're watching my video so they could check out some of the other fantastic creators there. And RetroWare, as you may or may not know, has their RetroWare Expo. First one was uh, last year in Wallingford, Connecticut. There's another one they're gearing up for now. So uh, that was one of the best times I've ever had. Justin Bailey also writes... What do you think uh, the future of YouTube is and what do you think the future of media is? And uh, I think the transition we're dealing with now is like when television came out and you had radio and somebody who's actually working in that has to decide, do I jump over to this new thing that's iffy called television or do I stay in this sinking ship that's radio? And uh, right now the problem that we're having in media industry is the problem that you had with radio where you're spreading these ad dollars across advertisers don't know what to do uh, and certainly right now newspaper are losing circulation televisions losing viewers and you have these advertisers uh, that haven't completely put their 
uh, money in the new media online world basket yet. So those jobs in that industry is still growing and uh, needs to get to the point where it was when television was very established uh, and growing, say, um, in the 60s and 70s. And I come from a television news background, as I said earlier. And, uh, you know, if you're really interested in that type of stuff and how it's evolving, especially with news content, I just finished writing a book called Producing TV and Online News, and that's available in the Kindle store right now and uh, eventually format that to uh, become a, a dead tree book that you could actually take in the subway with you uh, unless you don't live in New York City. Um, then you would take the uh, Ellen Chicago or uh, you would actually just probably drive in a car uh, if you're normal like the rest of the country and that type of stuff. So other cool stuff that I got to let you guys know about um, is definitely, definitely the studio show. So I'm looking at how one of my videos is performing on Facebook and I see Facebook suggest to me, oh, you should watch the studio show from Springfield, Illinois. So I immediately clicked on that. And uh, this is the most innovative show that I've seen in 28 years. And I say 28 years because the most innovative show I've ever saw before that was Mystery Science Theater 3000, which was innovative because you have a companion in, when you're watching a B-movie throughout that makes you laugh through this uh, bad movie experience. And also they had the host segments, but also kicking up even another level is you have this guy trapped in space with robots so it's a lot of concepts working there same thing with the studio show which I highly suggest uh, everybody check out subscribe to do whatever you can to support them uh, the studio show does some sketch and some great interaction uh, between the two guys the writing is just absolutely phenomenal and so they kinda set the show up with a little bit of sketch they have this brilliantly edited open that makes Springfield, Illinois look like it's Manhattan, basically. Uh, and I love how they make Springfield, Illinois look because there's so many good things about uh, Springfield. Um, I'm from suburbs of Springfield, Chatham, and behind the microphone here, I'm rocking the uh, Chatham, Illinois shirt. That makes me a Chathamite. But um, they bring together artists uh, as the show progresses, and they talk to an artist. And uh, then they have a uh, musical performer on there as well, interspersed with, uh, you know, some kind of like still photography, um, screen test type stuff, uh, some nature shots, which is, these are very short segments interspersed. And uh, also to um, Loft Guys, I believe it's called, where it's more um, sketch. But they put it together in a long form, a traditional show, but it's also broken apart. Uh, into loft guys um, and that type of thing as well but these guys are absolutely amazing I had to go uh, tweet about it and uh, actually one of the uh, the guys uh, the talent um, hosts stars of the show tweeted me right back and he says oh we're doing the season wrap come over to the uh, to the loft and I, I wish I could I don't live in Springfield uh, area anymore I'm currently in New England um, but I would love to do that. That would be super cool. And so I will be back with my family going to Springfield this August, and that's going to be super fun, checking out the Illinois State Fair, seeing friends and family uh, at the Illinois State Fair. Kiss is going to be there, so uh, maybe you want to see, I'm told, two out of the original four band members. And uh, also from Springfield, Illinois, you may not know from RetroWare TV as well, is uh, Pixel Dan. Make sure you check out uh, his show. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and uh, so what do we have on the itinerary for Instantly Dated? Well, the next episode, as I said, is going to have uh, Matt Jackson, uh, me, and Sean Brennan. If you haven't checked out the uh, last episode with Weird Paul, that was a lot of fun. We talked about uh, some old stores that we used to hang out in, Zare and Venture and Children's Palace and KB Toys and that type of stuff. So, like I said, shoot me an email. Um, ask me whatever you want on Facebook or uh, whatever you got. Instantly dated at gmail.com is the email address. I'll talk to you guys later.